Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast we will review the events associated with the cardiac cycle. All of the activities associated with one heartbeat is called the cardiac cycle. This includes both systole, or contraction, as well as diastole, or relaxation, of both the atria and the ventricles. In an average adult with a heart rate of 75 beats per minute, one cardiac cycle lasts about 8 tenths of a second, which includes the alternating contraction and relaxation of the atria and ventricles. This leads to blood pressure and volume changes during the cardiac cycle. Blood is pumped from high pressure areas during contraction to low pressure areas. The cardiac cycle is a mechanical event, similar to squeezing a plastic water bottle full of water. As you squeeze the bottle, the pressure of water inside the bottle increases, just like the pressure of blood in the heart chambers increases during contraction. This diagram displays the relationship between the ECG and the changes in atrial, ventricular, and aortic pressures, as well as ventricular volume during the cardiac cycle. Atrial pressure is indicated by the green line. Ventricular pressure is indicated by the blue line. And aortic pressure is represented by the red line. All of the pressure shown in this graph are only for the left side of the heart. The right side of the heart displays lower pressures. Let's now take a closer look at the events of the cardiac cycle, beginning with atrial systole. Atrial systole lasts for about a tenth of a second and is the time when both the right and left atria are contracting. Both ventricles are relaxed at this time. The SA node or pacemaker depolarizes and triggers atrial depolarization. This is shown as the P wave on the ECG. Atrial systole or contraction occurs after atrial depolarization. Both atria simultaneously contract which increases the pressure on the blood in each atrium. This higher pressure results in blood being forced out of each atrium through the open atrioventricular or AV valves and into the ventricles. The semilunar valves are closed. As atrial systole ends, Ventricular diastole, or relaxation, also comes to a close as both ventricles fill with blood. About 25 milliliters of blood is pumped out of each of the atria into the ventricles. Each ventricle is already about three quarters full with about 105 milliliters of blood due to passive ventricular filling, which I'll explain later in the cycle. So at the end of ventricular diastole, each ventricle now contains about 130 milliliters of blood. This volume of ventricular blood is known as the end diastolic volume, abbreviated EDV. Now the beginning of ventricular depolarization is indicated by the start of the QRS complex in the ECG. Next is ventricular systole, which lasts about three tenths of a second, the time when both the right and left ventricles are contracting. During this time, both atria are in a relaxed state in atrial diastole. Ventricular systole is the result of ventricular depolarization. As the ventricles begin to contract, the pressure on the blood within increases, which pumps blood up to the AV valves and closes them. Both sets of valves, the AV valves and the semilunar valves, are now closed. This period of time is called 
isovolumetric contraction of the ventricles. Isovolumetric means the same blood volume and muscle length. In this time, the contractile fibers in both ventricles are contracting and increasing tension, but are not shortening. This muscle contraction is isometric, where the length of the muscle fibers are the same. The volume of blood in both ventricles is also the same. That's called isovolumic, since all four valves are closed at this moment in time. Now the ventricles contract further, which results in a sharp increase in the pressure of the blood inside both chambers. The AV valves are still closed, but the semilunar valves now open when the right and left ventricular pressures exceed the pressures in the pulmonary trunk, about 20 millimeters of mercury, and aorta, about 80 millimeters of mercury. Blood is now pumped out of both ventricles and through the open semilunar valves, a time called ventricular ejection. This lasts for about a quarter of a second. This movement of blood out of the ventricles is analogous to wringing water out of a wet rag. There is a pressure difference in the right and left ventricles due to the differences in where each is pumping blood with the pressure in the right ventricle lower than the pressure in the left ventricle. Remember that the right ventricle is pumping blood into the pulmonary circulation, delivering blood to the two next door neighbors, the right and left lungs, so the blood pressure doesn't have to be that high. The left ventricle, however, is pumping blood to the rest of the body through the systemic circulation and requires a higher pressure. The right ventricular pressure rises to 25 to 30 millimeters of mercury compared to the left ventricular pressure of 120 millimeters of mercury. Both the right and left ventricles eject the same amount of blood, about 70 milliliters, at the same time. The right ventricle is pumping blood through the open pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk, while the left ventricle pumps blood through the aortic semilunar valve into the ascending aorta. But not all of the blood is ejected out of each ventricle. There's about 60 milliliters of blood remaining in each ventricle after ventricular ejection. This blood volume is called the end systolic volume, abbreviated ESV. The volume of blood ejected from each ventricle during every heartbeat is called the stroke volume. This is equal to the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume. Here we see the equation Stroke volume is equal to the end diastolic volume, EDV, minus the end systolic volume, ESV, with the difference being the stroke volume. During a resting heart rate, the stroke volume is around 70 milliliters, which is about 2 ounces. The end diastolic volume is around 130 milliliters, and the end systolic volume is around 60 milliliters. So 130 minus 60 is equal to a stroke volume of 70 milliliters. The beginning of ventricular repolarization is indicated by the T wave in the ECG. The relaxation period now begins, which is a time when both atria and ventricles are in a relaxed diastolic state, which lasts for about 0.4 seconds. Ventricular diastole is the result of ventricular repolarization. Both ventricles relax, which lowers the pressure in each chamber. This lower pressure causes the higher pressure blood in the pulmonary trunk and aorta 
to flow backwards towards the ventricles. The cusps of the semilunar valves catch this backflowing blood, which is shown here in the diagram as the closure of the aortic valve. The pressure closes the valves as they're pressed together by the blood filling them. As blood bounces off the closed aortic semilunar valve, a small bump called the dichrotic wave is visible on the aortic pressure curve, this red line in the diagram. There's a short time period after the closure of both semilunar valves where there is no change in the volume of blood in both ventricles. This is because all four valves are now closed. No blood can flow into the ventricles from the atria because even though the pressure of blood in the ventricles is dropping, the ventricular pressures are still higher than the atrial pressures. This time period is called isovolumetric relaxation of the ventricles. The ventricles relax further, resulting in a lower ventricular pressure. Blood is now flowing into the atria and building up pressure. The AV valves, including the bicuspid valve, are now opened when the atrial pressure exceeds the ventricular pressure. The ventricles begin to quickly receive the higher pressure blood that has been building up inside the atria in a stage known as passive ventricular filling. It is called passive because the atria are not contracting during this time. The movement of the blood through the AV valves, as shown here in the pressure graph, with the opening of the bicuspid valve is due to the higher pressure from the atrial blood volume alone. The ventricles are about 70 to 80 percent full by the end of the relaxation period, containing about 105 milliliters of blood. The start of another cardiac cycle is indicated by the appearance of another P wave in the ECG. Now another cardiac cycle begins with the onset of atrial contraction.